Billy Bragg, CTC. I feel, I wrote a story in September and I wasn't able to make it over because there were, and I was, it, I, and I felt that, that I was so upset because the CTC has created this amazing environment that has made me write very different stories than I was writing before. And I felt that this was the story. It's like in that relationship where you're sure you had that conversation with your partner, but you had it in the shower and you were rehearsing it. And <laughs> so this was so informed. I went to see Billy Bragg in September in Malmo. And two songs that he was singing just inform this story. One is, um, oh, what is it called? Oh, God, Between the Wars. During the miner strike in 1984, Billy Bragg was supporting the miners, and he wrote a song. And this I love because it just makes me think of my dad that worked on the railroad, and it's all related. I'll get there, trust me. And you have been really good. I know it's late and you want to go, but just stick with me. <laughs> all right, here are the lyrics. I was a miner. I was a docker. I was a railway man between the wars. I raised a family in times of austerity with sweat at the foundry between the wars. I paid the union and as times got harder, I looked to the government to help the working man and they brought prosperity down at the armory. We're arming for peace, me boys, between the wars. It reminds me of my dad. The other one that reminds me of sort of what I was going through in the 80s and he came out with this in 1984, and I remember listening to him, and it was, he was so crisp and clear. He just played an, uh, an electric guitar, and, and, and he, he oh God. So this one's called The Have and Have Not, and I want this on my tombstone. Just because you're better than me doesn't mean I'm lazy. Just because you're going forward doesn't mean I'm going backwards. <laughs> Billy Bragg. Here's the story. It is related. It's wide arcing. Thank you for sticking with me. Coming up in the go-go 80s, I realized that I failed to meet the unspoken goals of my generation. Looking back at my life, I know that my list of accomplishments and achievements or successes, both financially and whatnot, really lack. <laughs> I'm 52 and the long look back, I realize now I can put my life in sort of order and I explain that I never career tracked. I lived what I refer to now as an unconventional work life, schlepping hardcore, piecing together my rent with various jobs, some of them temporary, some of them semi-permanent. Mm -hmm. One of the results of my work lifestyle choice is that I possess none of the perks of the career track. I don't own property, I never got into the market, every car that I ever had I drove until it died. <laughs> my re if I live to retirement aid, my retirement funds will be a small amount cobbled together, allowing me to live out my old age fantasy of working as a greeter at Walmart <laughs> and living in the woods in a tent. <laughs> and I'm pretty much on track. <laughs> so. The moment a traditionally successful career-oriented oriented person asked me things like, what do you do for a living? What do you drive? Do you own mountain or beach? Besides knowing that we are not compatible as human beings, I generally slink off to find a whiskey. However, recently I stumbled into an un tangible, or excuse me, a tangible nugget, something which no one can take away from me, a moment an achievement. My dad worked on the railroad, which is not impressive in that he was not an engineer or a conductor, just a clerk, a simple clerk. However, there are perks to having a father that worked on the railroad. For one, your dad can confidently sing, I've been working on the railroad with sincere authenticity, <laughs> which he did and still does. And then there are less obvious hidden perks, like when the cargo cars were broken into and the cargo was robbed, the cargo would be written off by the insurance and therefore anything left was distributed to the guys on the railroad. I never forget coming home and seeing my dad pile boxes and boxes of Captain Crunch on the dinner table. <laughs> but the greatest fringe benefit 
of having a dad who worked on the railroad was my all access pass to the train yard. My dad worked at the train yard situated at Port Richmond in Philadelphia, where the Reading Railroad connected Philadelphia, Pennsylvania via its port. The coal and the iron from Pennsylvania would be brought down through the Reading Railroad and in to Port Richmond and out to the world. On Sundays, my dad would load all the kids into his old station wagon and we would drive to the train yard. It was always an adventure. We would arrive at the train yard and the station wagon rear end would unhinge and we would disembark from the station wagon like soldiers storming a beach. Immediately, the smell of diesel and grease and various odors unknown hit your senses. Then we got funneled into the train yard office, a grimy, simple, cinder block structure with old desks, the smell of cigarettes, a crummy bathroom that always had a nudie calendar, <laughs> and the dog. We were always briefed on the dog. Do not go near the dog. It is a train yard dog. It is meant for meanness. It is bred for meanness because it is a guard dog and it eats cats, it eats rats, and small children if you get too close. <laughs> but once inside, my dad would ask, if Franny was working. Franny was the engineer. Now this was a very fragile set of variables. If he was working, we might get to ride on the engine or the locomotive. Only if the yard master was not around, then we could get ride on the train. Franny was a classic old school railroader, always happy to take us for a ride. Now in fifth grade, in the library, at St. Bernard's Catholic School, I discovered a non-fiction book written for a 10-year-old which explained in detail with diagrams, illustrations, how to operate a diesel locomotive. <sighs> I studied that inside and out, memorized it all. Having been in the cab of a locomotive, I recognized all the parts, but now I knew how they worked and what they did. So the next time we went down to the train yard, my dad got Franny to take us out for a spin on the locomotive. There in the cab of the locomotive, he looked around at the brood of five children, ranging in ages from eight to 16, crammed into the small cab of a pusher engine. And he asked, so, who wants to drive? A question slash option never previously offered. Taken back, my brothers and sisters just looked at one another awkwardly. But I shot my hand up confidently. I will. OK, kid. Go ahead. Without missing a beat, I pulled down the round, padded engineer chair, which was hinged to the wall, and I sat down. I grabbed the upper throttle with my right hand and the lower throttle with my left, and I put my foot on the dead man's pedal. This was a safety measure installed in the locomotive. In case the engineer dropped dead, the engine would come to a halt. Insider tip, by the way, all the engineers put a toolbox on the dead man's pedal. <laughs> Another advantage of having a father who was a Rayleigh. So in seconds, I had positioned myself like a pro and looked at Franny, who looked at my dad, asking, Jesus Christ, what are you teaching these kids, Joe? I don't know, Franny. OK, kid. Take her out of the yard. I moved the throttle in increments as the book instructed, 10, 20, 30, yet made the rookie error of going too quick, causing Franny to exclaim, Jesus Christ, kid, don't steamball her out of the yard. Too late, we were rolling fast down the tracks right towards the yard master. Upon seeing him, Franny cried out, everyone, get down, too late. As we flew past the yard master, he spotted the joy riders shouting, get those kids off that engine. Too late, I was steamballing her out of the yard and into my personal history. As I grow older, I realize I love trains. <laughs> and that there is sort of a geek train world, geek train folk, they come in all flavors. They just might have more groups and subgroups than the LGBT community. 
I mean, there are the train spotters, which are the super creeps. Then there's the model railroaders, various gauge, G scale, garden scale, O scale, double scale, H, O, N gauge. Then there are the indoor train modelers versus the outdoor train modelers. Then there are the folks with the large scale, which you can actually ride on. Then there's the Venn diagram of the guys who actually worked on the railroad and also had model trains. And then there are the railroaders by association, association, the RBAA, which I'm a part of, because my dad worked on the railroad. Another great perk. Your membership in the Train Geek Club and where you lie on the spectrum of railroad freaks is revealed when the subject of trains come up in conversation. It's generally triggered by a story of trains and then a gentle sharing begins of relating stories, which then builds up sp steam, pun intended, and it always takes a turn for the worse and becomes a subtle competition as people trade stories and compare train authenticity and a show of one-upmanship. I'm not competitive. If anything, I turn away from it. I roll over. I don't want to win. But recently, my younger sister, my baby sister, Jennifer, who, by the way, was too young to go to the train yard because the dog might eat her. <laughs> My baby sister was hired by the Philadelphia's local transit company, SEPTA, the Southern Pennsylvania Transit Authority. And it's an office gig. But she has gone through required train and track safety and operation type training. And she sends, keeps sending me images and updates of her rally life, leveling up her authentic, authentic railroading accomplishments and experiences, images of her in a safety vest on the railroad tracks, her official certification on the tracks, and so on. I admit it. I almost gave in and accepted that I had been out-trained. <laughs> then it hit me. No matter what she managed, no matter even if she leveled up and became an engineer, I would be envious, and my life would pale in comparison in the spectrum of the RBAA. But no matter what, I still had one thing that she and most train lovers do not possess. I have one thing that they cannot take from me. At 10 years old, when offered the driver's seat of an old diesel locomotive, I answered the call and steamballed it out of the yard. Get those kids off that train! Too late. <laughs> Wait, I'm in lane.